Live from the Opera House, it's story time with your host, Ben Whiting. Hello, friends, and welcome to Live from the City Opera House, it's story time. I'm your host, Ben Whiting, and on this show every week, we have a great story read by a special guest, and then we have a fun activity that you can participate in right from home. I'll tell you the supplies you need for today's activity in a little bit, but if you would like to know the supplies for future activities on future episodes, visit us online or on social media, and you can download an activity sheet that will give you all the supplies you need for every episode. Now, we all know that when we have friends who help us out, it's important to thank them. And we would like to thank some friends who've made this show possible today. Traverse City Area Public Schools, the City Opera House, Newton's Road, Tattle, and our series underwriting sponsor, Bell Tire. Thank you so much from the bottom of our heart because of your generosity, support, this show is possible. Now, on to today's book. Did you know that in the later months of summer and the early months of fall, that is traditionally known as a harvest time? Here in Traverse City, we have an incredible variety of fruits and vegetables that we grow. Apples, cherries, grapes. Maybe you've had some of these in your school lunch or seen them in the grocery aisle. My personal favorite is Romanesco. It looks like the green, spiky-headed cousin of broccoli and cauliflower. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how does a plant become a plant? Well, plants come to be through the process of germination. Now, germination doesn't have anything to do with coughing or sneezing. It's actually the process by which a seed becomes a plant. Now, you see, seeds have little baby plants inside them that are asleep, or scientists say they're dormant. And when they receive the signal to wake up, that seed begins to sprout roots, branches, leaves, and eventually becomes a full-grown plant. Now, that leads us to today's activity because we are going to be making our very own germination activation pouches. The supplies you're going to need for today's activity include a Ziploc bag, some dried beans, peas, or seeds, a paper towel, and some water. Now, if you don't have these supplies readily available, that's okay. Just watch the rest of the episode, and then you can perform the activity later on your own time, or you can watch this episode on demand. Now, I'm really excited about today's special guest, Amy Smart. She's an actress on television, film, and a local business owner right here in Traverse City. She also has a passion for the environment, sustainability, and eating healthy foods. And she's going to be reading today's book, which is Squash Boom Beat, an alphabet for healthy, adventurous eaters. Today's book is all about being brave and trying the amazing variety of fruits and vegetables that we can get right out of our own backyard. With that, take it away, Ms. Smart. Hello, everyone. I'm Amy Smart. Thank you, Ben. Um, I am an actress, and I've been acting for many, many years. I love it. I've done TV and film and some theater. And when I'm not doing that, I am caring for the planet, because I also am, in my heart, an environmentalist. And learning about the planet and the health of the planet, you learn about the food that's growing on the planet and all the food that we eat. And this book, Squash Boom Beat, shows all the amazing veggies that we can put in our body. And I know that your grown-ups have taught you that veggies are good for your health. Well, you want to find vegetables that you actually like and you want to eat because that's so good for your body. So there are some pretty cool vegetables out there. And we're going to read this book and you're going to find ones that you want to try. Okay, here we go. Squash Boom Beat, an alphabet for healthy, adventurous eaters, written and photographed by Lisa Maxbauer Price. Stomp your feet, squash the ground, it's time to explore all around. March to the garden, listen to the beat, get ready to find something wild to eat. A. At first, Asparagus appears, long and thin like warrior's spears. B, then marvelous beets with juice like ink. Better wash after eating in the nearest sink. C, 
Slice through cabbage and it looks like brain. Robots don't have one, so they can't explain. You will know Swiss chard by its rainbow stems that are found on its wildly colorful ends. D, dinosaur kale. Feels like an elephant's wrinkled skin. Watch leaves turn to liquid after a blender spin. See the dragon tongue beans? No need to fear. Cook them to make those odd purple spots disappear. E, don't let eggplant's spiny stems deter. Its fleshy fruit has a nice meaty texture. Easter egg radishes are known far and wide for looking this festive without being dyed. F, tucked inside fava bean's pillowy pod bed is a second shell to shed before you can be fed. For a snack, keep a flowering chive stem handy. Plus, fennel tastes like black licorice candy. G, garlic may be stinky, but eat it every day. It might keep the doctor or Dracula away. Peel to study a bulb's papery skin or chew a black clove like a vitamin. H, heaps of heirloom tomatoes, knobby and strange, grow not just in red, their hue can change. You can also eat thyme, no, not from a clock. The healing herb is used in sauce and soup stock. I, Indian corn is used mostly for decoration. When turned inside out, it's a popcorn celebration. J, just one bite of jalapeno turns a cool tongue hot. Have some milk handy, a little or a lot. Curious? K, try kohlrabi raw if you wish with stems like whiskers of an alien catfish. L, it won't make you pucker. The name is a fluke, but please slice and savor this round lemon cuke. Leeks are onions with palm trees on the top. On the bottom, find hairy roots like a mop. M, Look for morel mushrooms hiding on the forest floor. Forge fungi with your family or go buy them at the store. N, nasturgeum offers more than gentle perfume. On salad, you can eat this peppery bloom. Newsflash, sweet natural honey will never go rotten. Think hardworking bees, they should not be forgotten. O, oh, on your mark, get set, count onion layers in one try. Careful, these vegetables can make even strong chefs cry. Organic means food is chemical free, just the way nature meant it to be. P, the longer a parsnip grows underground, the sweeter it will be when it's time to chow down. Boom, boom, yippee! Behold the small but mighty pea. Don't stop now, keep reading. Look and see. Q, protein-powered quinoa is a very old grain. So many ways to eat it, it is totally insane. Rocket arugula leaves, leaves grow quite quickly from the ground, and Romanesque cauliflower looks like a funky queen's crown. R, chilled or grilled, rainbow carrots are unique, and radicchio has veins like lightning streak. S, Thin-skinned summer squash is a cinch to grow. The scalloped kind is shaped like a UFO. Cooked winter squash gives the heart a flutter 
when a fork can poke the rind as easily as butter. T. A turnip is white under dirt where it lays. The top changes color when touched by sun rays. It's wise to eat these purple tater plants. The fingerlings have lots of tons of antioxidants. U. Ugly pumpkins seem scary, but they are helpful at lunch. Simply bake the gourd seeds for something yummy to crunch. V. Spy the star on this veggie. Chip, chip, hooray! Tomatillos make very tasty salsa verde. W. Wow, the leaves from white salad turnips are sour, but these greens are packed with bone building power. X. Mixed greens and wax beans. There's no question, they protect tummies by helping with digestion. Why? Yukon gold potatoes glow so bright. Even their blossoms are a radiant sight. Once a yellow tomato begins to sprout, its climbing vine grows up, not out. Z. Save the best for last. Alert, alert. Zucchini is a farm food you can eat for dessert. So remember, in the dirt and the wind, with the worms and the bees, there are glorious green harvest jubilees. Go chomp and chew with a squash boom beat to celebrate the wonders that sprout at your feet. And there we have it, so many delicious vegetables. You know, I started planting a garden maybe 10 years ago and it started really small and then it kept growing. And I've tried to plant so many different kinds of vegetables and fruits. And now that I have a daughter, she loves to go into the garden and eat little cherry tomatoes. Maybe that's her favorite thing. And she also eats kale from the garden. Have you guys ever tried kale before? There are so many vegetables that you can try. And it's also really fun to cut up a bunch of all different kinds of vegetables and put them in a soup and cook that all together and eat that with crackers. Yum. So vegetables are something that you want to eat every single day if you can. And it's so much fun to try all different kinds. And when it's warm out and there are farmers markets, Go try to have one of your grown-ups take you around and see all these amazing fruits and vegetables that grow. At the farmer's markets, there's so many amazing ones. And if it's cold out, you can see them in the grocery store. But I encourage you to find and try all different kinds of fruits because they're really good for your body and they make you feel good too. I hope you have a really wonderful day and I'll see you again. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Smart, for that fantastic reading of that great book. But now it's time to take what we heard and put it into action with today's activity. And to do that, we have Mrs. Heather Van Strat with her family, a teacher from Central Grade School, here to walk us through today's activity. Ms. Van Strat, how about you get us started? Thanks, Ben. Today, I have two helpers. I have Grace, who is 14 and goes to Central High School. And I have Austin, who is 10 and goes to Eastern Elementary. Um, I teach fifth grade at Central Grade, and I've been there for 10 years, I love it, and we're so happy to be here with you today. The reason we don't have masks on right now is because we're part of a family unit, and so because it's just us, we have our masks with us for when we move around the building, but we don't have to wear them right now. When we get up after this, um, after the show, then we will certainly put our masks on. Today, we're going to talk about a uh, window greenhouse, and we're super excited to make it with you. Um, Squash Boom Beat highlights all of the wonderful produce that we have in Northern Michigan, and this is the very best time to head to your farm market or your local produce stand and find all of the wonderful things that they're harvesting right now. So to get us started, Grace is going to go over the materials that we need to, to uh, create our window greenhouse. So what you're gonna need is a Ziploc bag, um, a 
paper, half of a paper towel, which you can just fold in half, um, some water, and seeds, beans, or peas. Now the seeds that we chose to use today are from a spaghetti squash. And spaghetti squash falls into the family of the winter squash, which is mentioned in Squash Boom Beat. The beautiful thing about a spaghetti squash is that number one, it has a really long shelf life, so it can sit in your pantry for a very long time before you have to use it. And secondly, it's a great substitute for spaghetti. And so last night, Grace had some. Um, she really likes hers with marinara sauce and Parmesan. Um, but we harvested some spaghetti squash seeds a while ago. If you're going to use seeds from a squash that you use at home, there is a process that you need to do in order to get them to germinate or grow, which we're going to talk more about. Now, the inside of a spaghetti squash is very much like a pumpkin. There are a lot of big seeds and a lot of pulp. So when you're preparing it, you want to scrape all of that out there, pick out the seeds, and then if you have a bowl of water or a bucket, you can put all the seeds in there. And you want to do that for two to three days. The good seeds are going to sink to the bottom. The seeds that are so good are going to rise to the top. So you'll get rid of those seeds. You don't need those seeds. You can discard them. But the seeds that fall to the bottom are the good ones. So you'll want to lay those out on a dry towel for three to five days to dry out. And then you can either save them to plant at a later date or use them like we are today. So the first thing that we need to do is to take our, pardon me, take our paper towel and get it wet. So Grace, if you want to get yours wet, and then you're going to squeeze out the excess water. Okay. All right, buddy, your turn. You want to squeeze out enough water so that it's not settling in the bottom of the bag, just so that it's damp. Perfect, and then it'll be folded in half like Grace is in, and then you want to tuck it flat into the plastic bag. Good job. Now this is actually the trickiest part. When you're placing the seeds, and I'm gonna borrow Grace's for just a second. When you're placing the seeds in the bag, you want them about a quarter of an inch from the bottom, but not resting on the bottom so that they're in, in any water that might sink down. So go ahead and put your seeds just a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Let's move your paper towel down a little bit. There you go. All three of them? Yep, you can put all of them, space them out a little bit. Perfect. Now, instead of closing the Ziploc bag the entire way, we're going to leave about a quarter of the bag open. And I'll talk about why in just a moment. Okay, now let's close it all, but about a quarter of the way, okay? It's kind of tricky. He just got a cast off, so we're still working on some mobility. There we go. Now, seeds need four things to grow, and inside each seed is kind of a baby plant, and the baby plant's sleeping. <clears throat> and in order to wake the baby plant up and give it a signal that it's time to grow, it needs these four things. It needs sunlight, it needs air, it needs water, and it needs food. So what we need to evaluate right now as a scientist is we need to think about, are my seeds getting those four things? So, will our seeds be getting sunlight? Yes. How? The window. We're going to tape them into the window. And when you tape them into the window, you want the seeds facing in so you can watch them grow. Will our seeds be getting air? Yes. How? From the little hole. Okay, we left a quarter of the bag open, so they'll be getting some air. How about water? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where will they be getting water? From the paper towel. Okay, and the last one's food. And this is kind of a trick question. Any idea where it's getting food? Hmm. Um, the seed shell? The seed shell. So the baby plant is going to gain nutrients from the seed shell for quite some time. What you'll notice is the plant will be getting bigger, the seed shell will be getting smaller. And when the seed shell is very small, that's when you know it's time to plant it in soil so it can continue to grow. So that is our experiment. There is one important tip though that we learned. If you live somewhere that is very hot or very cold, you can 
tape your bag into a vase or a glass and then put it in the window so that it will prevent your seeds from becoming too hot or too cold. Now put your scientist hats on. Once your seeds start to grow, like the ones we have in this bag, there are ways that you can observe them. You can measure them with a ruler. You can take a notebook and you can journal about how they're growing. You could chart their growth. You could even draw pictures if maybe words and um, reading are a little bit out of reach. If you're very young, you can draw the growth in different pictures and just put the day of the week so that you can see the progress of your seed. That's all for us today. Thank you so much. We, I hope you had as much fun as we did. Thank you so much, Ms. Van Strat, for walking us through today's activity with your family. It was an absolute blast to watch. You remind me of one of my elementary school teachers, and so I absolutely enjoyed today a lot. Also, thank you so much again to Ms. Smart for reading today's story, and thank you to our sponsors for making this episode possible. Most importantly, we want to thank you. Because this show would not be possible if you didn't tune in to learn about great books and have some fun activities in the STEM area. But we're not done yet because we want to see what you've created. So send us a photo of your project with your name, age, and a description, and you'll be entered to win a copy of today's book autographed by our special guest and yours truly. You can send those photos to info at tcaps.net. That's I N F O at tcaps.net. If you enjoyed today's show, we hope you'll tune in every Wednesday at 9 a.m. for Live from the City Opera House, it's story time. And of course, you can see all of our episodes on demand at tcaps247.com. That's tcaps247.com. My name is Ben Whiting, and until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep learning.